what is going on guys today we are back with another video just rolled into town and uh we're at a location which i've only fished one other time this year but have not filmed it's me we got my good buddy cody with what is happening guys where are we today we are on lake of the woods da, 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 da. lake of the woods you guys probably can't see much of it right now because there's not really much to see but we just arrived at base camp for the night and push the truck door open it is uh cody how cold was it this morning 28 below 28 below zero it 28 still feels like it's 28 below that's uh this is how committed i am to the bite right now i'm not sure how well you guys can see this this is how i left the house this morning and this is how i'm gonna fish the entire day today but it is me we got cody we actually got up here a little bit later than we thought we were going to um kind of mid-afternoon right now like we said Lake of the Woods. We're fishing the south end of Lake of the Woods, which is kind of known for this crazy numbers bite. And we got an opportunity for my good buddy Chaz, First City Guide Service. I'll go ahead and link him down below. He does it right up here on Lake of the Woods. We actually stay with him on Red Lake too, earlier in the ice fishing season. He's got a bunch of beautiful ice castles here. We're gonna be spending the night in one, me and Cody, hopefully catching a bunch of these fish. And me and Cody, generally when we fish together, we're like a couple of crackheads out on the ice. Is <laughs> that true? Absolutely. He's going this way, I'm going that way. We're drilling multiple, you know, millions of holes a day running around putting in way too much effort every single day but today we're going to take the easy route and uh, we'll fish here tonight i don't know if we're going to do two videos or one video one video tonight maybe one video tomorrow morning something like that but uh it's cold out it's super cold isn't it it's it's nipply <laughs> it is incredibly cold out negative 28 negative 30 somewhere in there and we're going to spend the night out here in one of these beautiful ice castles on lake of the woods so like i said i'll go ahead and link all chaz's stuff down below we've got to quit talking my mustache is already think i i can feel it freezing we gotta unload the truck, get inside the ice castle, and hopefully start catching some fish. All right, guys, well, we literally are just moving stuff in, and Cody put down the first rattle reel. And I'm not joking, it just stripped about three feet of line off. I mean, this is literally within like a minute of stepping foot into here. We got him right there. This is crazy. I mean, this is why you come up and fish with Chaz and get in one of these houses out here on Lake of the Woods just for the sheer abundance of walleyes. And it doesn't feel too shabby. Oh yeah, and this is absolutely what we are chasing up here. Tons of these Lake of the Woods saugers and walleyes. Now, this bite is absolutely a numbers bite. We're gonna catch a pile of these 13, 14, 15 inch saugers. And generally what happens is you'll see a few bigger fish in the mix, some walleyes in the mix. Um, and then, you know, you always got that shot of that big, you know, really big 27, 30 inch, 10 pound walleye up here um, when you're fishing out here on Lake of the Woods. But the sheer volume of walleyes and saugers is really what makes this bite cool, especially this time of year. I might almost need my forceps right away. We don't even have literally anything like set up ready to fish outside of just having this rattle reel down. I think I can get them off though. And there we go, number one, my first fish on the rattle reel. And uh, like I said, just moving in. There we go, let's let him go. And uh, Cody, are you keeping some fish? Not that one. Cody's not keeping that one. He's gonna hold off for a little while. Rattle reel number two going off. Cody's stash up. Stash is back, boys. The stash is back. The stash is back. Is it good luck? Is it good luck? Is it good luck? Is it good luck? Oh, Got there him? we go. How's he feel? Feels like a monster. Feels like a monster. We've been in Ooh. the shack for like two minutes now. This is fish number three coming topside. Oh yeah, Cody did actually jig another small one. Now look at that. Oh, so, size is getting better for me. Much better, folks. Take a look at that fish. Hashtag world record. But uh, we're out here and this is what this bite is all about. If you are experiencing the midwinter blues and you guys just want to come catch an absolute pile of walleyes, this is your trip to make. Oh, that one, Tommy. Cody is on. Tommy, we got a fish. This is actually, does he feel better than that first super tiny one you caught jigging? A little bit of weight, not much of a fighter, but. There we go. A little sauger there. Those are the ones that everybody's coming up here, frying up right there. Tasty little things. The tasty 14, 15 inch saugers. Mm, yummy. And what are you jigging, little spoon? Little tiny spoon. Little tiny spoon. Got a minnow in there for us even. Oh, he took one of the rattle reel minnows. No, 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 no. This different is, minnow, huh? This is a different minnow. 
Well, we've been in the shack now for not very long at all, and a couple of rattle reels gone off already. Caught a couple of fish doing that. Just kind of getting started jigging. I need a forceps or something. Awesome. And there we go, guys. Nice sauger up here on Lake of the Woods. Tasty one there. I'm gonna keep this fish. Uh, just due to, you know, I did reel it up a little fast. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's gonna be a tasty one. He's gonna hit the fry pan. Maybe uh, bake him, we'll see. But uh, awesome, tasty little sauger. Ooh, possibly bigger mark. Oh, oh. Right there, fishing on Cody. Well, just started jigging over here, Wouldn't and I am fishing. Cody just about stepped in ice hole. Not gonna lie, it does this kind of a little stiffer rod. It feels like a. Oh, we do got a little bit better fish here. There we go. Oh, there we go. There's the first decent all natural walleye right there. Mm. Probably about what? How long is that, Cody? Fifteen and a half, sixteen. Yeah, right there. I am actually fishing the Acme Hyper Hammer, and I even got another fish down there right now. I mean, this is wild. Fish after fish after fish, and uh, a lot of these just cookie cutter, eater sized fish. And uh, I went straight, Cody's fishing a spoon. I went straight to the Acme Hyper Hammer, and uh, the same one I was fishing a lot in Minnesota earlier this ice season. Just getting it down there right in the zone. And this is actually the smallest size of it. This size, and then the one slightly bigger than this are kind of my two favorite ice fishing sizes. A lot of noise in kind of this dirty water and that tailpiece so I can get it hopping around all erratic. And uh, we realized right off the bat when we caught like a bunch of fish in the first one minute of fishing that we did not have enough bait. And uh, the nice part about the Acme Hyper Hammer is that you fish it with no bait on there. So I just get it down there a couple feet off bottom, pop it around, peel it away from when they come up and uh, got the job done on that one. Right there. Fish on. We are hooked up. You got another one going? Yeah, I got one going. Or am I in the rattle reel? I don't think I'm in the rattle reel. Cody's got one going. We might have one in the rattle reel. This one is not going to be super big. Oh, yeah. Another decent sauger, though, I believe. And uh, did I get in the rattle reel or what's going on here? I did barely get in the, the rattle reel. We'll send it back down. There we go. Another one on that hyper hammer. Well, it is some fast-paced action out here. This is exactly what the relaxing kind of fishing trip we wanted to have, where it's just sit around, be lazy, catch a whole bunch of fish. And this guy's got it both ways, where it's like almost pinned his mouth shut. There we go, on the hyper hammer. We're sitting here in about 30 feet of water, just out here in the mud flats, and uh, jigging a whole bunch of these guys. Look at that, awesome. And these are what everybody's taking home and uh, frying up right there. A bunch of these Lake of the Woods saugers and walleyes. We'll let them go back for more. Oh. Marking? Halfway decent. You won't eat it though. We'll go up high and get aggressive. Got him right there. <laughs> Sometimes just, you know, those fish come in right on bottom and you're jigging pretty tight to bottom and they don't, if they don't fire up and bite right away. You kind of get way up above them and start popping it around a little bit more aggressive. And on a lot of these bigger lakes, they just are super abundant with fish. They'll just come flying up right off the bat. We're fishing in about 30 feet, so I'm just kind of taking my time with the fish, but he feels halfway decent. Another sauger, another one of these kind of cookie cutters. But I will say this, sitting out here and putting in zero work and just chilling in the shack and catching a whole bunch of these things. And that little bait's been just an absolute killer. The little Acme Hyper Hammer and some of this deeper water popping it around like that. There we go, another little cookie cutter sauger. Super fun if you just wanna burn up a bunch of this midwinter lull time frame and catch a bunch of these fish. There we go, and he's back down on the Hyacme Hyper Hammer. And that little lemon head one, for whatever reason, has been catching fish almost everywhere I've been going this winter. And that's that smaller size, but I kind of like it because you can do some subtle pops with it and get it to move a lot. And uh, the fish definitely seem to be liking it. He's hooked up. There we go. Oh, Cody is officially on. Does it feel decent? Like so. Not super tiny? Nice chunky little sauger. 
tangled up. He's not too shabby. No. Not too shabby at all. That golden chartreuse. Ooh, he's got the gold gold chartreuse on. Yeah. Beautiful. Classic. Fish is just healthy. He's a chunky little guy. Yeah, he's eating well. So it's probably been a little while since you guys have seen me use the hyper hammer. And it's kind of a newer bait for this year. Um, we'll just kind of do a quick refresher, I guess, on some of the things I like about it. Number one, it's got this molded flexible tail. So you can actually flip it upside down. You can turn it around. Never going to break, never going to come off. It's got a little piston kind of hammer um, right in the middle of it, a knocker. And then it's got the classic Google Eye feature, like right in the eye, where it's got kind of rattles going two ways. But number, the first thing I like about it is that it's hollowed out. It's actually a little bit lighter than like your standard uh, let's say a jig and wrap or the Acme Hyper Hammer. So it glides a little bit more and it takes a little bit less to work. Number two, it's got that bigger back-sized hook. And the way I'm fishing this is really pretty simple. And we talked about this. We fish this bait a lot on Red Lake earlier earlier in the ice season. And we're going to get down in the zone here. Just so maybe we could potentially catch a fish on camera while working it correctly. But um, because it weighs a little bit less than kind of your standard, you know, this style of bait, this category, which is generally a solid lead bait, you can work it a lot softer. And that's always a good thing, especially like in this midwinter time frame, or really anytime you're fishing through the ice. A lot of times the more movement you can give a bait without really moving it that much is a good attribute of a lure. So basically what I'll do is I'll get this thing. You know, a lot of guys have this tendency, they want to fish on the bottom. You know, they want to fish one inch off the bottom because they think that's where the walleyes are, which is where the walleyes are. But a lot of times fishing this bait, especially when we're fishing in depths like 30 feet, fishing like 25 feet down, you know, five feet up. Or if you're fishing at 22 feet, maybe fishing at 19 feet down, several feet up off the bottom. Because a lot of times when these fish commit, when you're fishing higher up off the bottom, they'll commit a lot harder than they will if you're fishing six inches off the bottom, if that makes any sense. So what I'll do, there's two things I'll do. Number one, when I'm trying to get a fish interested, I'm doing pops that look like this here not really letting the bait rest too much. And what that's doing is this bait's constantly darting and kind of gliding around and shooting different directions, or it's doing that classic big circle and the bait's never really stopping. Now I'm not fishing any live bait on here, so we never really want to let this bait just sit like this and wait for a bite, because you're not going to get bit very many times doing that. But now the second I have a fish start coming in, what I'll do is I'll go to these smaller pops and what I'll do is just let that bait settle. So what it's doing is it's popping out to the side, coming back to the center line, then it's just sitting there for a half a second and then I pop it again. So that when I'm trying to attract a fish from a distance, I'm doing kind of bigger pops like this. When that fish is about to bite, what I'll do is go down to these smaller pops like this and just kind of let that bait settle a little bit more in place. And sometimes they'll kind of creep it up while that's going on. Most of the time you only gotta you know, bring it up something that looks about like that right there and they pretty much commit to it. But fishing these smaller style of glide baits like this, you don't have to work them nearly as hard. I feel like people have this big misconception that when you're fishing this kind of lure through the ice, you have to be doing something that looks like this. And this is generally less good than something that looks like this. These short little poppy twitches, fish starts coming up, kind of walk it in place, slow it down a little bit, raise it up, and that's a lot of times when you get bit. Oh, you guys hooked up? Hooked up, buddy. Decent or no? It's got weight to it. Ooh, it's got weight to it. I do feel like it's tangled up in the deucer though. <laughs> Not used to this. Ooh, oh, right we here. got the other kind of fish. Dude. The stinky, smelly tulabees. Your favorite kind. Oh, my favorite. I love the tulabees. That is like perfect pike bait size though, isn't it? Oh yeah, I would love to run that thing. Pike. All right, well, some walleyes, saugers. And now the smelly deep water tulipy. Right there, hooked up. Definitely a nicer fish. So we're getting into our prime time window here. This is definitely not a 12 entry coated. No? I can assure you of that. It's making me get up. Oh, it's not a 12 inch. It's not a 12 inch. <laughs> I don't know if I have the rattle reel on this one. I don't think so. Look at that. That awesome. is definitely um, a little bit more we're after right there. So I actually got in this prime time window. You know, we're just fishing a big flat. So I wanted to fish a bait that had just a ton of calling power. And look at that. That is the Acme V rod in a quarter ounce. Just absolutely down the hatch. 
and he absolutely smoked it. And uh, we kind of went through a little bit of lull, I would say, overall, as far as we're not just like seeing as many fish as we were for a little bit of a while there. And uh, this guy just I actually had one other one that I thought was a nicer fish kind of shoot up and not bite. You got the players? Yeah. You want to keep this one or no? Might as well. Yeah, we're going to keep a few fish while we're up here, I think. But I uh, had one other nice fish shoot up, and there we go. Look at that right there. That's what I'm talking about. Beautiful walleye up here. You know, not super big fish, but ton of action. Absolutely. And just smoking them on uh, a variety of different applications, really, whether that's the dead sticks or our set lines, the rattle reels that came in the shacks, or, uh, you know, that hyper hammer and now the B rod. But I'm going to quit talking because we got to get back to fishing because it's kind of this prime time. And I'm not sure if they turn on a little bit or if they don't turn on, but either way, that's just a great kind of an action bite to be out here on right now. Alright guys, well we are back on the road, headed home. Just a quick little trip up to Lake of the Woods. And um, we kind of fished a little bit this morning. Fished a little bit more last night after we kind of turned the cameras off and just kind of relaxed and took it easy. And um, yeah, fun trip. And uh, this is kind of fishing where our weather basically has been the last couple days, like 30 below every morning. Super high winds. I mean, the wind's got to be blowing 30 sustained today. Maybe, maybe more even honestly out on the lake. So um, it's kind of the only thing you could do on some of these days is get in some of these hard houses and um, just catch a whole bunch of fish. And just Lake of the Woods is a great place to do that, just because you know there's tons of fish that roam that whole south end mud on Lake of the Woods, where tons of action, a lot of fish. Obviously, there's some bigger fish mixed in, which we might not have caught, uh, but there's a ton of fish in there. And uh, was it a swell time? It was a swell time, Chaz. has a great operation. If you guys are looking to get out, you know, next year, maybe this year even, you, I know he's got some weekdays available. So definitely, you know, hit him up. He runs a heck of an operation. He's a guide as well. Corbin's a guide as well. They run probably the best sleeper rental operation in northern minnesota always moving houses always plowing they got shacks on red like i talked about that which we've stayed on before and uh, now it's good to get up and fish with them on lake of the woods so we'll go ahead and link all their information down below um, but definitely if you got the winter blues where you're sick of it being cold and miserable all the time get up there get in a hard house and catch a whole bunch of walleyes and saugers so appreciate you guys watching this video just a quick little kind of you know recap of some of the stuff that went down in the ice house last night and um yeah we're gonna head it home i'm gonna clean a few walleyes and saugers and um i am off on another different multi-species adventure this week exciting. exciting adventure this week which i'm excited about so like i said appreciate you guys watching this um stay tuned for more content we'll see you guys next time smash the subscribe button smash that subscribe smash. button smash it